The White House has directed not to disclose the substance of How any discussions. How many times did you meet with the president alone in the White House in 2017? I don't know the answer to that. How many times did he direct you to deliver a message to a member of his cabinet? The White House has directed not to disclose the substance of any discussions did with the ever, president. Did he ever discuss with you any concerns that he may have committed a criminal offense? The White House has directed not to disclose the substance of any discussions with the president or his advisors. Did you tell the president you were going to deliver the message? I can't comment on private conversations okay, sir, with the president to preserve page. executive privilege. I'm sorry? I can read you the exact statement again if you'd like me well, to. I said the White House has directed that I not disclose so the substance of any discussions with the president or his advisors to protect executive branch confidentiality. Not stonewall me in my questioning. You felt a little squeamish about delivering that message, correct? No, sir. Well, why didn't you, uh, why did it take you so long and you never even delivered it? Correct. I never delivered the message. Yeah, you chickened out. I went on vacation. You went on vacation. <laughs> and so you put, the, you put the message in the safe, in your safe, in your home for safekeeping, correct? Before you went on vacation. I took my kids to the beach, Congressman. Didn't you think it was a little strange that the president would sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and ask you to do something that you knew was against the law? Did that strike you as strange? I disagree with the premise of your question, Congressman. You weren't a policeman? I didn't, I didn't think the president asked me to do anything illegal. You didn't think it would have been illegal for you to ask Mr. Sessions to drop the investigation and to just go on to future presidents and omit everything with this president and go ali ali in free? We're going to start with the next one about colluding with Russia? You didn't think that was illegal to obstruct justice? Congressman, the president asked me to do anything illegal. You didn't want to tell the president that you were passing off his message to someone else, did you? You knew he wanted you, someone he had described as his enforcer, a loyal soldier to do it, because the president trusted you. Isn't that right? That's a question for the president, sir. Okay. It's in the public record. Your job is to be Donald Trump's political enforcer, correct? No, I don't believe so. Let me ask the question another way. Are you the hit man, the bag man, the lookout, or all of the above? I think I'm the good-looking man, actually. Five hours of that yesterday. There was also <laughs> this exchange between Lewandowski and House Judiciary Counsel Barry Burke. My question to you, sir, is on national television, did you lie about your relationship with the special counsel and whether they sought your interview? I don't know. Prior to the Mueller report being published in redacted form, did you ever misrepresent what you did on behalf of the president? I can't think of an instance where that would have occurred. Let me show you an interview that you did uh, on May 14th, 2019. I don't ever remember the president ever asking me to get involved with Jeff Sessions or the Department of Justice in any way, okay, shape, or form, so, ever. So you did you hear that, sir? That was you saying on MSNBC, you don't ever remember the president ever asking you to get involved with Jeff Sessions or the Department of Justice in any way, shape, or form. That wasn't true, was it, sir? I heard that. And that was not true, was it? I have no obligation to be honest with the media just because they're just as dishonest as anybody else. So, you, so you're admitting, sir, you were not being truthful in that clip, correct? My interview with Ari Melberg? Yes. Can be interpreted any way you'd like. Why did you lie on national television, sir, about the president giving you a message to the attorney general about the special counsel's investigation? I don't recall that particular day and my mindset at the time, so I couldn't answer that. The beat with wow. Ari Melberg getting some airplay inside Congress yesterday. He'll be with us, by the way, coming up at the top of the hour. Um, Shannon, there's a ton to, to yeah. get through there. But the nut of what we saw yesterday was Corey Lewandowski saying effectively, yes, the president of the United States did ask me to go to the attorney general, Jeff Sessions at the time and influence in some way the Mueller report, the Mueller investigation, and to change the trajectory and have a focus on things that came after the 2016 election. Yeah, which, at the time the Mueller report came out, that piece didn't really get as much attention. Um, and I remember at the time, maybe a day or two later, saying to my editors, we should really do a story on Corey. Let's do a Corey story. So we finally did a sort of separate story on Corey, because I think we were all reading through it. We got to the Don McGahn stuff. There were so many um, sort of, you know, shocking pieces in that volume, too, that this Corey Lewandowski piece got lost. But yeah, that's really one of the clearest moments that could be argued is obstruction, because the president was actually directing 
Lewandowski to go to Jeff Sessions yeah. and tell him to end an investigation and to publicly clear him. Um, and I'll also note, uh, Lewandowski keeps citing executive privilege here and keeps bringing up the fact that the White House has asked him not to answer questions. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot find a lawyer, either friendly to the president or unfriendly to the president, who says there is any grounds for the White House to be making this executive privilege claim. Executive privilege protects the executive branch. Right. Once information leaves the executive branch, either the White House or the Justice Department, outside the executive branch, so to Corey Lewandowski, who is not in the executive branch, then the executive privilege claim is gone. It has now left the executive branch, so you can't bring it back in and cite executive privilege. So there's no grounds for that. So uh, essentially, he is not being truthful to Congress. Uh, that could be seen as obstruction by the White House instructing him not to answer these questions. They are now trying to obstruct the House investigation. Uh, so a number of uh, pieces here that I think, even though this seemed like a circus, uh, if people were to get back and, and sort of get into the nuts of it, you still see that obstruction of justice case being built. It was a circus. Kurt Bardella, uh, look, uh, throughout the day, <laughs> He was a mini Trump. Uh, you can speak to Corey Lewandowski in real life, and, and often you can see someone who doesn't seem like Trump. But in front of the cameras, he was playing for an audience of one. He was rude. He was insolent. He was stonewalling, and then ultimately was revealed to be a liar after being shown that he went on a national TV show, Ari Melber's, it's not like a camera, was shoved in his face, and he chose to lie to the American people. That's what we discovered yesterday. It was a circus, but we learned something about Corey Lewandowski and his ability to lie to the American public for the President of the United States. So my question to you is, at one point, is since this is a reality show and since mm -hmm. that's the, the game that the Trump Republicans are playing, why wouldn't oversight, why wouldn't any of these committees uh, file, uh, 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 charge him with contempt? Why wouldn't they, these levers are there. Why not force some answers from some of these people who refuse to give them and are using, quite frankly, fake reasons not to give them? You know, Meek, I, th this was what was so frustrating to me watching the hearing unfold yesterday. As someone who used to spend years of my life helping choreograph hearings like this, I can tell you, back in the Republican days, if we had had a witness come before us who was this hostile, who was this obfuscating, who was downright disrespectful to the entire proceeding, yeah. we would have held them in, co in contempt within five minutes in of that time. proceeding. I mean, I don't understand, I really don't understand, Nika, what House Democrats are doing at this point. We're nine months into this new majority, and it seems to me like they are caught off guard when they have a hostile witness from the Trump administration, if you will, who's unwilling to be cooperative to their investigation. They're sitting up there perplexed that the guy's not answering their questions straightforwardly. Right. Now, we know about the Trump people. They lie. Whether you're the White House press secretary, whether you're the president of the United States, whether you're Kellyanne Conway, they lie. So the idea that somehow the biggest revelation coming out of this hearing is that Corey Lewandowski went on MSNBC and lied. If that's the biggest revelation, this hearing was a complete failure because their job was to try to get new information to bring to life the Mueller report, and they weren't able to do that because they were unprepared for the level of hostility that they were getting from Corey, and I don't know why they were unprepared for that. David Drucker, final word. What are we missing here? I don't really think we're missing anything, and I think this is a problem, Mika, with members of the House of Representatives conducting these sorts of hearings. They're never as prepared as U.S. Senators, and I'm not sure why that is. There's a lot of grandstanding. We're heard, we heard a lot of one-liners, and I think that there is always a lack, and we've seen this with, with Republicans under the Obama administration and now Democrats under Trump, a lack of strategic focus in going into these hearings, knowing what it is you want to find, knowing what it is there is to find. So when the, the subject of the hearing naturally re rejects a lot of the lines of inquiry, you already know where you're going, and you can at least present the picture of competence and success. So it's possible that Democrats are laying the foundation for future hearings in a way that will help better make their case. But all it was yesterday was really performance art by Corey Lewandowski, and it made Democrats look like they didn't really come up with that much. That impacts public opinion, and the problem they're having with impeachment is not necessarily that it's not justified, is that you do not have enough political support in the country to go forward with this and come out successfully on the other side, especially with an election that is just barely a little more than a year away. And to your point about an audience of one, Corey got the only thing he wanted yesterday, yep. an approving tweet from the President yeah, of the United States, telling him great job. Tweeted out something about.